हेलो एवरीवन नागुरा आर यू प्रेजेंट हेलो नागुरा आर यू प्रेजेंट हेलो ओके सो आई थिंक ही इज ही इज आई थिंक इफ यू आर स्पीकिंग यू आर ऑन म्यूट नागुरा ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट द टुडे सेशन सो एम आई ऑडिबल अदर पीपल यस सर okay that's great thank you so let me introduce myself so this is sandeep and uh, uh, i have been working in the field of uh, analytics from the past 11 years and uh, so my overall it experience is around 11 years and uh, i have around 10 years of experience into machine learning and artificial intelligence and i have started my career as a machine learning engineer and uh, currently i am working as a data science manager in the reputed organization so it is very good that i am able to interact with every one of you so uh, this so this these introductory sessions on the data science basics uh, we are conducting these to enable you so that each and every one of you when you are trying to learn something let's say the data science itself uh, to familiarize yourself to what you are learning like let's say if you are uh, learning python programming you will be you will be, you all be knowing that what you will be doing like you will be building the python programs python scripts uh, and uh, complex uh, programming uh, scripts to run but more like uh, today we will be just looking at what is data science uh what, what what components will be present in the data science and uh, what is the input and output of the data science and what you will be uh working on the data science projects so in the today's uh, session we will try to cover these things briefly and uh, from tomorrow we will be starting uh, on learning some of the data science basics and so coming to our our institute so uh, we are uh, bbic which stands for uh, uh, bright blue innovation circles so this was founded by uh, uh, saida and uh, he is he is also a software professional uh, who has around 11 years of experience and he works into uh, testing and automation domain so uh, we saw that uh, the uh growing demand for learning the uh, it courses and technologies and also we saw uh, so how we are different from traditional software institutes uh, all the members let's say the founding members the co-founders and myself and even so other people we all are software professionals working professionals so we thought that when we try to interact with the real time uh, people so we, Uh, so what we teach them will be exactly uh, into the real time when you try to take some courses over in the market you will be just be taught by some uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, tutors who just learn but here we try to teach you so that you will be most familiarized with the real time market and uh, with that intention we every one of us uh, uh, and also you can see that the price uh, may uh, the quality and also the prices that we will be keeping up will be the uh, best from the market uh, let me just give a brief introduction about our the institute 
and then we will be quickly jumping into the Okay, Nagura, I don't have the uh, screen sharing option. Can you enable that? Yes, yes, on it. Just a second, actually, I'm also logging as a other uh, guest. So just a second. Okay. So meanwhile, uh, I'll be explaining the things over the audio itself. Uh, I'll just show. Uh, so these things are generally um, the institute things. So uh, we have started uh, with a with motive that uh, we provide the quality of education and also uh, the trainings to everyone. So that's why with that intention, we had started and uh, everyone, um, every one of the trainers that you see in this uh, courses are completely professional training. Uh, they are working professionals and each one of them are experts in their own domains and uh, coming to the technologies that we provide. Uh, currently, we are covering our data science, React JS, Android and uh, uh, Django, Tableau, Oracle, MySQL big data and selenium with selenium automation manual testing so we have all these technologies and these things can also be found with the links that nagura has shared over the marketing so once you go enter into our corporate uh, website you can see all these courses and if some of you are interested over one to one trainings or let's say if, if you you are available with a batch and if you want a specific course we can also uh, arrange that with the required uh, trainer. And and also feel free if anyone has any kind of questions. So these are interactive sessions and the, so nothing is, uh, I mean like, uh, don't feel this as a, uh co general college courses because we are not you are not going to uh, pay us anything or we are also uh, so we wanted to interact with everyone and make sure we give maximum knowledge to everyone and you also get benefited from this And I think the other things, I think, let me, so some of the things like uh, how to contact or uh, these things will be shared by the marketing team. So let us try directly jump into the uh, course introduction uh, to avoid wasting the time. Yeah, actually, sorry for the inconvenience. So, Sandeep, sir, can you please log in as a host? I mean, uh, I shared the credentials there. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, so uh, should I? Technical glitch, it, it will not allow me. Oh. So it is asking me enter the host key. Can you just send me the host key? Enter yes. the host key to claim host role. Yeah, just it again. Yeah, I think I can log in via these credentials. Okay, then okay. Host key also eight zero 
six eight one seven. One minute. Let me. I think someone is on mute. Can can they mute themselves? Okay. Uh, sorry, there was a disturbance, so I I had to mute everyone. So if anyone is having any doubts over the introduction, you can feel free. And also any doubts regarding the marketing, the sessions, the uh, the syllabus that we will be covering over the full length course, uh, you can directly reach out to Nagura and uh, he will help you regarding this and also coming to the mm, syllabus so i will be just uh, showing you the uh, brief syllabus since we are ahead of the time already um, so uh, we are we have planned an uh, comprehensive uh, full length data science course and in the first week we will be giving we will be introducing you the various concepts let's say like so the data science course can be split into briefly into some five to six components so i have the presentation i will be going through that in detail but i have seen that previously there were some students uh, from non it backgrounds and also other uh, other areas so to explain them so we have just split into this basics so if you can see here is everyone able to see the screen? Uh, good, thank you. So you can see that we in our uh, comprehensive course and uh, we try to give the intro introduction to the uh, data science, which is what we are covering today. And in the next, in the Full length course first we will be teaching them python so even though if someone is from non-it backgrounds or let's say non-data science backgrounds you will be learning first the basics of the coding that we will be required for the data science program and also uh, the data science generally requires statistics and mathematics to understand the algorithms and also the analytics so and also the uh, the functional building blocks of uh, the functional building blocks of algorithms will require the mathematics. So these are not new things. So the mathematics that we will be covering will be mostly related to the, uh, the plus two level. So the equation of a line, plane, what are those, the slopes. So those things we will also be revising so that you stay in touch and you understand the concepts when we move ahead. And the next is data processing you will be seeing in the what is data processing like so when you try to uh, get the data most of the data is in raw form or un, uh, impure form so let's say like uh, when you are trying to get some promotional data uh, like let's say you are uh, when you are trying to enter into a website they ask you some uh, personal data for the campaigns let's say like dairy milk itself uh, you try to uh, uh fill a campaign you give some data so some of you uh give the proper data or like let's say when you're trying to enter your mobile number uh some people enter with starting plus nine one other people try to log in with general 10 digit some people just give uh, the landline some people only give nine numbers in their total mobile number so when you try to give the 
uh, for a machine learning model, we have a saying like garbage in and garbage out. So when you feed the garbage uh, to the machine learning model, you only get the machine uh, garbage out. So what the data that we feed must be uh, neat, precise, and in a in a unique form. So uh, that's how uh, the model can understand and interpret and predict the out, out uh, predict the out uh, insights, or it can say what it is. I mean, like it can predict, give you exact insights on your data. So these data and also these data processing is again into four, sub like four modules. First one is data handling. So you know that currently the data is very huge. So even not even terabytes and petabytes more than we in the current day scenario we, for any application, we are uh, uh, reaching near to petabytes of data. So how when you want to perform some data analysis, so let's say like you wanted to, uh, you can just say some, take some cancerous data. So when you are handling overall the world cancerous patients, you, they will be in the millions. So you have to bring the data from their servers to these local servers. So bringing such large data will include big data. And how do you bring the data? How do you store the data? So those things are uh, taken care in the data handling and the data processing, as I said. So data processing is something where you uh, make the data precise. So un un unwanted data, or anomalous data, or let's say these kind of mistakes. The example that I gave for a phone number, you bring the data in a fixed format or in a fixed, uh, fi fixed syntax. So those kind of data processing, you data processing is done in data processing section. Next, next is exploratory data analysis. So once you bring the data, you process the data, you make you 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 visualize the data. Like let's say for cancerous patients itself, you bring the data. You see how many number of what is the ratio of cancerous and non-cancerous patients, and among this. What is the number of male and female? And among these male candidates itself, what is the distribution of the age? Like how many patients are between 0 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50? Because when you are, let's say like when you are trying to design a, a drug, uh, you need these kind of understanding. I'm just giving you an, a scenario. Let's say if a company is trying to design a drug and they have this kind of data. so you have to first see like when you are trying to design a drug you have to make sure that it is applicable to all age scenarios and also you have to see like what is the major section of the people let's say if you saw that 0 to 30 is not a uh, no one has the cancerous uh, per, for a particular type of cancer there has been no record of uh, patients between 0 to 30 then why do you conduct the trials for 0 to 30 it's not needed. So generally, you test the patients only from 30 to 60. So that understanding, you understand from the exploratory data analysis. Mm. Hope I'm making clear, everyone. Any doubts? Good. Um, the next section is featureization. Featureization is something where you try to handle the various forms of data. So though the data is present in the various forms, your machine finally only understands zeros and ones. Let's say you have the text data. You might be, you. I think everyone of you is familiar with Siri, the Alexa and chatbots, these things. So where you are, you are just giving your voice input, but finally you are getting the reply as a voice output. What is happening? So there, this featureization takes care. So look, when you are giving your voice commands, it first takes the voice commands. It converts the voice commands to the text commands. And these text is again converted to zeros and ones or a binary vector. So where if you have unstructured data, so unstructured data is nothing but uh, non-tabular data. So tabular data or Excel data are generally called as structured data. Unstructured data is something, the text data, voice data, image data. So these are called unstructured data. When you have some unstructured data, 
you will be you that you will be handling those in the featureization section and once all these things are done then you will be moving to model building in that model building so you will be having feature engineering where if you want to synthesize any new features those things will be taken care from the available available attributes or columns columns of the data and then you will be building the models and then metric evaluation so if something of these are still confusing or if you are any unable to understand because if any one of you is from non it background it's completely okay because i have just given you a just brief overview so that what we will be so most of you might not be understanding what is this data processing what is this model building so i have just given you very sim very brief overview so don't worry uh, nothing if you if any one of you are not understanding anything so we we will be sharing you this uh, syllabus section so like this is in very in depth and uh, very so uh, essence we are wanted to give you a introduction so i am just giving you those things so this uh, the statistical decision making you can see the predictive analytics so this is very in depth so i wanted to be very brief and uh, so that's why i had shown you that now coming to the uh, just the data science uh, let us discuss some more with visuals so that uh, most of you can understand so so generally the data science vocabulary if you can see here in um, has all these like data science mining you might and every one of you might be heard again like machine learning artificial intelligence data science the different terminologies and you might be wondering what all are these like and so we will be looking all those things in depth uh, in the coming slides hope i am good any doubts okay let's move ahead so what is data science so this is the general uh, so what generally what data science is we are trying to extract the information that is hidden within the data and we try to process it and then we feed this to a algorithms so that we extract some insights and predictions so this is what data science is i mean like we are not doing something uh, magic within this uh, data science algorithms so what we are doing is so most of us uh when the data is very huge let's say the weather condition itself the weather prediction so weather forecasting many of you might be see they might be seeing how uh, weather forecasting they say that it might be a rainy rainy uh, rainy day sunny day or fog fog will be there so these kind of things they predict and they let you know and how these things are done so when we are, when they are trying to predict something they tried the input the various factors like uh the the various uh, sea breezes and the temperature and also the humidity that is present over the various areas and how the rotation of the sun so all these things will be taken into the in uh, consideration and then they so based on the past data let's say on any one of the day if they if similar factors were available and if it is it has been a rainy day so they try to predict that over some day these kind of a scenario was present like the sea breezes were very high the sun the sun was not up and the humidity content within the air was up to this mark so this indicates that it might be a rainy day but the problem is how do you find out that because ev the every day as the number of factors are more finding out a particular scenario might be different because we have like if you take the data we have like past 10 to 15 days of 15 years of data you cannot go and check every day like uh, as today these are the values for which day it is matching so to do so instead of doing that what we are trying to do is we are trying to build a brain which will say that for these scenarios this will be the output 
So this brain is the algorithm. That's it. So for this brain, we are trying to feed the inputs saying that for the weather forecasting. So these are the sea breezes. The current, the breeze current is this much. The sun temperature is this much. The humidity is this much. When I give these things to the algorithm, algorithm, the output gives that, okay, this will be a rainy day. So that, that is what happens in the data science. So we extract the data, we process the data, and we feed it to algorithm, and the algorithm gives the prediction. And the data can be in the various forms, either structured or unstructured. So you can see that data science intends to analyze, understand the phenomena, and it tries to uh, reveal the hidden logic or the it tries to give uh, based on the the data it gives it tries to give you a prediction so when i say prediction so it is not doing something uh, new so whatever the algorithm gives i mean the output gives it will be exactly based on the data so whatever you do in the data science is only related to data and it's completely dependent on data the uh, algorithm is not i mean like algorithm is not doing any magic it is just trying to understand the logic in the data and it is giving you the output that's it it is not performing any kind of magic or something and why there are so many algorithms since the data that we have is is uh, very different i mean the scenarios that we have like weather forecasting credit card fault detection so the problem changes so one is a completely different one the second one second one is a uh, second one let's say the credit card fault detection it is a finance sector the other one is in weather forecasting it is related to the weather so the when the problem changes the logic underlying is also changes and you might be needing a uh, out of the available al algorithms you might need a be best algorithm to fit that hope i'm clear so if any one of you has some basic doubts or like what i'm explaining feel free to interact so this also just explains the uh, what is a data science we are moving from observations to theoretic to the to theory to computation so based on the data that we have previously we were seeing the observations how it is happening now based on the theory observations and theory we are trying to compute the predictions so uh, when we say prediction the prediction is happening based on the computation of the data that we have okay Moving ahead. So you can see the data science has spread over all the things. So machine learning, I, th I think most of you as, uh, as I said, like what is machine learning? What is data science? What is artificial intelligence? So you can see that when it when I say data science, data science doesn't ex just involve the machine learning or model building. So it has the applications over all the domains like uh, machine statistical learning. You need like when you want to solve a data science problem, you need all this. Like let's say first you need uh, machine or statistical learning. What is the statistical learning? Statistical learning is something that I explained to you, like for a cancerous patient, what is the distribution of male and female? How many are how many cancerous patients are present? Non-cancerous are present. What is the type of cancers for uh, we are mostly seeing among them? So these are the statistical learnings and application domain expertise, which gives you like when you are, when you are trying to understand a cancerous problem, you also need some domain expertise. Like, what are the different types of cancers that are present? Let's say if there are some cancer, uh, there are four types of cancers in the, uh, four types of cancers present in the data. And uh, like one type of cancer has only 5% of the data. 
like out of 100 records uh, one cancerous one cancerous data has only around five records so if you okay based on the data you feel that since that it is having only five occurrences you might feel that based on the statistical learning you feel that uh, since the number of records are very less you can just avoid that type of cancer but but actually the type of cancer is very important it is just that you don't have enough data so when you have the domain expertise then you come to know that this is a very important type of cancer and you cannot avoid that then you try to go around saying that at least you try to demand for more data or more cases so without having domain expertise uh, you cannot take certain decisions so before going to solve a data science problem you also need some basic uh, understanding of that problem like let's say credit card fault detection when you're trying to do solving that problem you need to understand the credit cards application like what are credit cards how do you how do the credit card system functions like when you say when you're trying to solve a credit card fault detection problem first you need to like how does a credit card transaction end to end happen like when you swipe in where does the data goes how does the uh, uh, how does the security operations like you input the key your uh, pin number or let's say otp so these things you have to understand so that you can better solve the problem and also you need visualization so visualization are charts most of you might be seeing this bar charts, pie charts already within. So like if you see this, this is a pie chart. Not, not exactly a pie chart, but representation of a uh, visual, uh, concept. So these kind of visualizations are needed. And mathematical optimization, you need some basic understanding of mathematics so that you can optimize the problem. So, and social science, data management. So all these things are needed to solve a data science problem. It's not that when a problem approaches you, you just process the data, you then immediately build the model and you proceed ahead without domain expertise, statistical learning, visualization, optimization. So these things, you cannot really solve the problem because various types of problem comes when you go into real time people approach you the client approaches you like they say that this is my problem to solve that problem you have to understand the their business which is nothing but domain expertise once you understand their business then you have to perform the statistical learning and then you have to go to visualization optimization model building so this is how a generally a data science project happens okay Moving ahead. So data science and big data, are they same? So they are not the same thing. So big data is something where you are storing the tons and tons of data and bringing the data to your required location. Like let's say, uh, the credit card is, is when you are trying to perform the transaction. Let's say it is a whether a fault for a fraudulent transaction or a good transaction. You perform the transaction and it is getting stored in the servers. So that is raw data. So you don't know it is a good data or bad data. I mean, like it's a good transaction or a fraud transaction, but it is getting stored over there. So big data is bringing that storing the data in various servers clusters and or to transport that into the required location and what is data science data as i explained data science is something processing those data and getting some insights from that big data that is data science i hope i'm clear any doubts until now Okay, moving ahead. So you can see that data science and artificial intelligence. So when you, so when you go in a overview, generally these terms are same like data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. 
so what is i mean like most of them are same but when you go into technical terms okay when you go into technical terms generally the basic is the machine learning and analytics and data science is something where as i explained getting the data understanding their domain building the machine learning problem processing the data so that all includes here and artificial intelligence is also includes where i mean like where your end problem end solution exists what is this end solution see let's say you try to build a credit card fault problem and uh, let's say sudden when you you someone has uh, stolen your credit card and performed a fraudulent transaction so and my model has predicted that it is a fraudulent transaction so i have when you perform a fraudulent transaction you see that here into the data science data comes data processing happens here and model prediction happens here but what is the use of that let's say i have predicted that someone has performed a fraudulent transaction the end user has to be known right like you have to be immediately intimated that hey sandeep uh, there has been a fraudulent transaction happening on your a uh, credit card and most of you might be seeing you receive a sms when let's say if you suddenly has spent some 50000 then you say you receive a sms saying that uh, hi sandeep there has been a 50k transaction happening in your credit card if this is not you immediately bl uh, block this transaction or intimate it so deployment of this model comes into this so artificial intelligence is something you can also consider it as a overview of the circle outer circle covering these two artificial intelligence is something end to end right from receiving of the data model process model prediction and then deployment so so that you utilize this predictions that is so that is artificial intelligence so coming uh, i mean like general in general terms data science machine learning artificial intelligence are same but when you go into technical terms like machine learning is something where you try to machine learning build the machine learning model and perform the predictions data science includes the data processing and everything including the model prediction artificial intelligence is something which includes everything right from inputting the data and solving the problem and feeding it to the end customer so when you when the end customer doesn't know all these things processing he just knows i received a sms saying that there has been a 50k transaction so he immediately responds to it or uh, calls to the customer care says that there has been a transaction so sending your predictions or making use of these predictions uh so that it is useful to end customer that also gets included in artificial intelligence anything any doubts okay moving ahead so machine learning produces predictions based on these predictions as i said data science gives you insights so the overall data science so the machine learning just gives you predictions the data science gives you insights based on this data i mean like non machine learning or non data science people they don't understand predictions so data science gives you what you need to do so i the same fraudulent detection use cases um, being discussed here and in this detection itself you can see that when when we receive the data we analyze the data we say whether it is a fraud or non fraud so when you identify it as a fraud early detection is important so that we detect that it is a fraud we send you the sms immediately saying that it might be a fraud transaction take care so let's say when you what happens if you don't identify it as a fraud you look into your statement in the next month 
by that time the transaction might have completed and when you go and report such things nothing happens so that's why early detection is important and intimation is also important precision what is precision so you any fraudulent transaction has to be identified even uh, these false negatives or false positives we will be discussing in the in depth but what this is mean is let's say there has been a fraud transaction and my machine will not identify that as a fraud transaction it it thinks that okay this is a good transaction and i can let it go so such things never should never happen if it is a fraud transaction it has to be identified immediately and there is a what are these false negatives and false so if there uh, i uh, the considerable error is if it is a good transaction you can even predict it as a fraud transaction let's say like i have performed a 50k transaction myself and i, I have received a sms saying that you have spent some 50k if it is not you immediately report to the customer care so that is a good thing because uh, it is a good transaction but it, i am just being alerted but let's say if it is a fraud transaction and if i if i am not being alerted so that is a big issue that is called false negative false positive i mean positive is something it is a fraud transaction if false positives are present i mean like if there are fraud transactions and i am unable to predict those then what is the use of building the model so false positives are those there are some fraud transaction and my machine says that these are not fraud transactions so that that shouldn't happen when there are fraud transactions it has to be exactly predicted okay. so other use cases are recommender systems like when you open your flipkart amazon you might be seeing the recommendations based on your pre uh, previous history so uh, based on this recommendation system we can even increase sales click click through rates the netflix is one of the netflix and amazon are the best examples of uh, these things so other application examples like one one of the thing is prediction uh, in the healthcare so what can happen why like in the li let's say the healthcare system to improve the uh, things let's say if uh, many of your like uh, health insurances so this is this case is regarding the health health insurance so you take the health insurance you want to utilize your health insurance to the most and the healthcare provider they want to reduce the cost to the minimum so you go to hospital one you get admitted you pay the company pays the insurance but the problem is not solved after one or two months you again visit the hospital and you claim the insurance again so ultimately what's happening is both are getting uh, i mean like your your problem is not getting solved in one shot and the insurance is paying the amount twice so based on the history the healthcare system what they do is they try to reduce the cost so let's say like if some of the one of the patient goes for a um, cancer treatment to one hospital but based on the history we know that that particular hospital is not solving the problem in one shot and there has been a history of readmissions so my machine learning model will say that for this kind of patient uh, because generally you uh for a healthcare general system we have some rules like pre admission pre -no pre notification is required so they what they do is if certain patients are being readmitted more into certain hospitals they remove such hospitals from the list or they say that at least give admission that don't try to go to this hospital these hospitals are the best hospitals so with with that they try to save the insurance money they try to save the population health of the population and also in the background they try to see what are the specific reasons for readmission so these are this is also one of the use cases so i am trying to give you 
what what uh, what can data science do for the various domains like you can see here this is a recommendation system this is a fraud uh, system so so this is this is general to entertainment and the retail sector this is related to the finance sector so this is healthcare sector so these are again smart cities not you can see that not well defined so this is just a general saying so better uh, planning better those things so these are i mean like this is again based on the statistic this can the sports you can also see the dream 11 and these things where predictions are made based on the data predictions are made based on the stamina of a particular player based on his his history whether he can uh, do certain runs or scores in a particular over so these days data science is also being used in in uh, uh, sports also so this is what i think i have shown you in the notepad like what does data science happen like data we bring it making data trustable and useful i mean like we process the data we clean the data we manage the data and then modeling and analysis is done and uh, visualization is done i generally this will be done before but also generally after modeling and analysis also we do uh, for understanding and then we sent for data press again the model will be sent for preservation so instead of this i gave just a uh, just a general explanation what happens in a step by step manner here so the same thing is being shown here so this is also the same thing research how we are using the data like based on the big data we bring it we make the data useful we send for analysis we save we use the data after the predictions we visualize and we perform the insights and again we save it to the clusters so the this is an overall cycle so what happens in the your data so i as i explained previously in the notepad so in the making data data cleaning sampling provenance so what what happens in the big data we save the in the big data we save the data in the clusters there are several clusters and uh, databases that are present and uh, data gets stored in these platforms what happens in the modeling model building of the models data and uh, building supervised and unsupervised algorithms predictions those things happen in the model and analysis and visualization we, uh, we 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 see what are the predictions we visualize the data and we again send the final insights we save it to the clusters the same thing which has been explained has been shown in a uh, picto pictorial presentation any doubts so thus so in overall you can see that data preparation data cleaning data model building and machine learning for data modeling visual, visual analytics all these are present in the data science so this concludes our session today what is data science what will be present in the data science like you can see here where we bring the data we process the data we use the data for model building so today it's we thought of covering what is data science what will be present in data science when you come into data science what you will be doing as a data science or data scientist so we wanted to give you introduction to the data science and uh, i hope i covered or gave you a little understanding of what is data science so we can discuss in depth in the coming classes so any doubts i think uh, you can feel free you can ask the, those things here like let's say uh, what what are the requirements like for the data science feel free like uh, so you can ask any basic questions there are no questions like which are lame or basic and every question is a valid question because it will be related to you and you itself
and let's say after we cover these basics in this uh, in this area i mean like in this week so once you some of the advantages that you will be getting when you take the course with us we will be providing you the certificate when you opt for a full time course we will be give, you we have the even opportunities for internship we have some, some paid roles uh, we are having with us with our uh, with our institute so these are some advantages so these things will be given uh, by the marketing team uh, in the coming days see scientist and analyst what are the difference see data analyst is something he analyzes the data which so making the data trustable and useful they process the data they analyze the data based on the visualizations uh, they do they don't go into modeling and analysis scientist is something we where they come into picture when they are trying to build a model data analyst is something uh, they only try to process the data observe the data and show the data to the uh, end, end user to make the decisions like you say that uh, let's say uh, which is the most recent selling brand best selling brand so based on one year data if you see you see that okay there the reebok shoe sales you saw that for the past one year uh, reebok sh shoe sales has been uh, very high like 70 percent nike shoe nike shoe sales has been only 30 percent so the data analyst says that okay reebok shoe sales are very high so you can go with this but let's say when it comes to data scientist he analyzes much more saying that okay you are taking one year data reebok has been into picture from the past one year nike has only come into picture from the past six months so within six months nike has uh, taken market share of 30 percent so if if i project this for the past one year nike has a much more growth and improvement compared to reebok so these kind of predictions or model building so that will be done by data scientists data analyst they try to uh, play around with data not predictions any more doubts okay so i think we are good concluding uh, the session and handing over to saida saida you can take over saida nagura are you present oh yeah thank you thank you for your session sandeep okay uh, there is no need to do this and uh, guys uh, please join the classes on time from the monday to saturday we have the free basic classes okay please join on time without any reminders okay then that's enough for the today's session thank you thank you